Oh, my mates yeah. hate me so much since I started doing this show. It's the worst. Oh, my this- God. Welcome back, guys. We're doing another week of Wine 01. This week, we're doing something a little bit obtuse. Rather than actually talking about a sort of wine, we're talking about a sort of wine person. And that sort of wine person is a sommelier. So we've got Amanda here, who's our resident wine expert. Brendan actually just is a facade of what a wine expert should be. This chick actually knows what she's talking about. So no, he, he, Brendan's really intelligent when it comes to wine. He's actually had some really amazing conversations with him. He's definitely not a sommelier, and I think that's the distinction yeah. we're trying to make today. The thing is, he's not here to defend himself, so I don't know yeah, why we're you're doing to it for him. him. <laughs> <laughs> Basically... I've heard of sommelier before because I've watched a couple of movies where people joke about the Somme. Point is that I want to ask you some questions about what it means to be a sommelier, how you become a sommelier, what the point of having them is. But basically, we'll start out with what are you? What's a sommelier, Amanda? Yeah, it's basically it's a wine waiter, but a trained wine waiter. And so whether that means you're like classically trained, so through um, an education program or maybe you're trained through experience, so working on the floor. Um, there's other ways you can also learn about it by traveling to different regions. So basically, it's a really highly knowledgeable wine waiter. So while you're waiting for your food, you get your wine from somebody else. Exactly. You know, or you have a question about what what wine would go with my food, or you know, it doesn't really have to do with what it is, but the, the purpose of a sommelier is to really elevate the dining experience. Okay. Yeah. So. I consider myself an AFL expert, but I don't have any credentials to back that up. Do you have any sort of credential that enables you to be a sommelier? Not in AFL, but... um. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, no one knows how to explain holding the ball. It's fine. No, no. So yeah, there's two uh, basic streams you can go down if you do want to be um, like a paper som, I suppose. I'll have paper behind you. There's the Court of Master Sommelier, which is um, sommeliers. Um, which is more kind of service-based. And then you also have the other arm, which is um, Wine Spirits Education Trust based in the UK, more education-based. So I've gone down the WSET part um, and I'm, I'm level three. So uh, one-off diploma kind of thing. I did this qualification about five years ago. Maybe now. Sounds so, a bit like Scientology if you, when we put it like yeah, that. No. <laughs> As someone who's currently going through level three, it doesn't yeah. sound a bit like I was going to say it kind of sounded like Pokemon Jeeps, but um, <laughs> So you said that the uh, the alternate qualifications yeah. one you had is wine and spirits. So can you have spirits sommeliers? Yeah, yeah, totally. Wow, so that's not, I didn't realize that at all. More often than often, they're just like a bartender. Yeah, and the other thing right. is as well, they, it used to be one award, so you'd get a diploma in wine and spirits. Mm-hmm. They've now separated it, so it's diploma. It might actually still contain spirits, but definitely level two, level three is only wine. Yeah. Okay. Level two, when I did it, it still had spirits in it. Same. And then I've also done level two in sake through WSET. Okay. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, it was really cool. Just a day tasting sake. Um, we do an exam at the end of the day. Yeah. Now, just before we move on from the what is a sommelier, the only other question I had was you said uh, before if you want to be a paper sommelier, so something yeah. that's actually got a... Yeah. So are there sort of like, um, I don't know, like experience-based underground... Some, uh, how how much... Like, are they authentic? Are they real? Yeah, they're authentic and they're real. Actually, a really good example is a good friend of mine, Lena Berry. She doesn't have CMS or WSET. She's an incredible sommelier. She's been to more regions than I've ever been to, particularly um, in Old World, so in over in Europe. She's travelled extensively. She really knows those particular sites. She's also got a wealth of experience, worked in amazing venues and trained and worked under some really incredible psalms. So you definitely don't need to go down those two paths. I think it's just like an easy option to get your foot in the door, to get you know get knowledge, get a community around you, get a mentor, but it's, you're not a prerequisite at all. I guess with the, you know, with working at, in a restaurant, every restaurant in the world, everywhere is constantly looking for staff. You never, it's very rare that you walk into a restaurant and it's like, sorry, we can't take you on. We don't have any position for you. It's very common that everywhere has a job. So if you just work your way up within an institution, you'll actually get to a certain point where you want to be if you just show your aptitude within that position. So is it kind of like how um, you can be a trained mechanic who knows how to work on cars officially versus someone who's a car enthusiast who has worked on cars their entire life yeah. and knows mm-hmm. how to work on cars, but yeah. there's nothing that no authority has gone like rubber stamp. Yeah. yeah. You, cool. Fantastic. Do you, do you dislike paper psalms? Is that like an insult? No. Like you fucking I, paper psalms? I've actually no. never used that term before. I just thought 
I thought to put it in context. Okay. People, it's a good way to yeah. explain it. Yeah, yeah it's a great it way to explain it. It's sort of like a qualification yeah. versus someone who's just really enthusiastic and loves it. Yeah, and the other Sick. thing is, is um, with Level 3, when I did it, there was a lot of people who were just wine enthusiasts, people who had never yeah. worked as a song before. Um, case in point, no I'm one. currently doing it. Yeah. There's plen- plenty of people that don't even work in the wine industry. It's like, no, I just love wine and I want to learn more about it. Exactly. Makes sense. So I think calling it Paper Som is kind of a really great way to put it as, as like, it doesn't actually speak to your experience. Yep. Um, and I won't name names, but... You know, I was recently chatting to a gentleman. I won't say what level um, of kind of qualification they're at, but it was very clear they hadn't really tasted many, like they hadn't really expanded their palate. They've passed the test, but they haven't lived yeah, the life. Yeah, very green. You know, he's studying at a higher level than I than I am, um, and he's pouring wines to me that I would never put on a list. I'd never show a guest. Interesting. Wow. And so I think that's where great to have the paper it's really great to have the foundation but you need a work service you need to like you know cut your teeth in it you need to do the late nights you know make a couple mistakes but, yeah you know yeah it is what it is all right so that's what a sum is yeah why do we need sums well money for restaurants mainly to be honest yeah so wine programs generally prop up restaurants when you say True. wine programs you mean just like the they make the bulk of their money off the wine list that they've yeah, got there. Yeah, most restaurants break even with the food, but they make profit from wine lists. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so you're looking at generally 30% markup for any bottle of wine. Okay. Sometimes more or less, depending if you have a sliding scale or you might have a, you know, a thousand dollar bottle of wine. You don't make, you don't make 30% on, but you make, you know, hundred bucks, hundred dollars on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and the way that kind of works is. What you'll find is generally pairing menus are really great value um, and it's a great way for a customer to come in and to be able to be like, I want to have something different with every single dish, but I necessarily don't have to make a choice. And generally wine pairings are great for Psalms because at the end of the day, they're able to maybe put something on that's a little bit more expensive, something that's a bit cheaper and balance it out over the mm. whole meal. Okay. Um, and so you make a lot of money through pairings. I, I guess for me as a a, a, wine, a person who loves wine and is interested in wine, I'd love having just like no decision of it. It's like, Same. you know what? You know more than me. Can you just please just like fuck me up with wine? Send me all of the coolest shit or just stuff that's interesting that works with the food. Totally, totally. And I think a case in point, I went to dinner on Saturday. We chew up the Psalms and we all were like, we don't want to pick. Yeah. You pick, you pick. What's good? Yeah, what's good? So I think it's uh, the, taking that element away of like... <laughs> That'd be terrifying for the waiter. Like I'd, they probably didn't know that you we were three sums, picking. but the idea that like you, ro- like you roll into the Unico Zello cellar door, you make it aware that you're a sum, then you're like, now Henry... Take me on a journey. I'm like, do you want like a pale ale? Like, can I help you? What with kind a, of journey? Some Listen, sort of. I tell you, gym. my favorite journey. It's down the road. We'll go to the pub yeah. and watch a, watch four quarters of football and in mid strength. Oh, We're on. Dear. That's fantastic. Um, so essentially, you so psalms are there to guide people through. Like, yeah. So why why they exist is because particularly as the world has opened up, and I mean psalms have existed before, like globalization and before mm. like you know international travel was really yep. easy to really understand wine you'd have to study it and understand like all the producers understand all the regions now if you're working on the floor you're talking about food you can't i mean there's some amazing weight stuff that i've worked with that are also really incredibly knowledgeable with of course, wine yeah but you either kind of have a focus on like service looking after customers which also sommeliers do or you're like i want to know about wine i want to know about like how i'm going to meet their wine needs or you're like, I'm just, I want to run food. I want to know about food. I want to mm. work in the kitchen or whatever. So I think that there's a large breadth of knowledge. You can't expect, you know, your average waiter just to know. So it's to fill in those gaps, really. So if you're looking at a, if you're looking at a menu and you open it up and you've got all of the entrees, mains, desserts, and then you've also got a wine list. And then over here, you might have a sort of, you go to some restaurants and they have like a feed me option and yeah. you just pay a certain price per head and it's sort of chef's recommendations. It's the things that they want you to be eating. Yeah. Is a Somme sort of the wine version of that ultimately who's like, hey, let me take the decision out of your hands. We do have all these fantastic wines here that all exist for a purpose, but I'm the person who understands them all and I can sort of guide you through the yeah. process of drinking them in a way that's going to be the most enjoyable for you. 100%. Yeah. And it, it relates back to like the customer experience, but then ultimately it's the bottom line it's the making money for the venue you can't expect somebody who knows nothing about wine to walk in i mean it's been done to walk in to put on a really well balanced wine list mm. or even by the glass list that you know that you're going to sell and that are going to keep your customers happy and it's going to work with your so what percentage of um eateries or restaurants like does a pub have a song some some yeah. some yeah some psalms yeah. yeah you know if you go to like the the crayfish hotel which is yeah. definitely a pub 
They've got a song and I got a dope ass wine cellar. Yeah. Same goes with like the Uradler and it depends in depends on the situation, but depends how invested they are in their wine program yeah. as well. So if well, like you know, if you're a, a, a pub, a regional pub, you only change your wine list once a quarter, mm. you probably don't have a SOM. I tell, I tell you what's a good indication. If you go to a pub in a wine region, they might have a SOM. Yeah. You probably have a higher likelihood, but more often than not, particularly in Australia, no. No. Do um, they is it ever like some cro- subcontracted work where it's like, hey, we try we change our wine yeah. list once a yep. quarter, can you come in and pick one for us? Yeah. Yeah, we write a wine list for you. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, cool. wine consultancy is huge. Um, particularly because that's you're just outsourcing as opposed to having that, you know, ongoing cost of maintaining a SOM. <laughs> well, <laughs> 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 you know, you're paying that once off, you know, consultancy, however often you need it. Yeah, as know? opposed to having them all the yeah. time. Cool. Yeah. What really annoys you as a SOM? Like, because I yeah. don't, so say, say you're at the restaurant and yeah. I've come in with my mates and yeah. I'm saying I want What's something that would come out of my mouth that would instantly recognize to you like this guy is either an idiot who doesn't know what he's talking about or he's being obnoxious? Like yeah. what is something that you really hate hearing? Uh, uh, like my pet peeve is just rudeness, I think, in general. Uh, yeah, I mean. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, we're all working like, in the hospitality industry. <laughs> I <know. laughs> yeah. But I think it's, I was, somebody was talking about it the other day, we were talking about the Vino, the wine app. I remember when it first started and like middle-aged men would, you know, you'd come over with a bottle of wine and it's like, just one second, I'll take a snap of it it up on Vino and it's like Always why so it's take like, my recommendation why waste my time why don't you just type in every single bottle into Vino and make your own choice it's like the um <laughs> like the whole joke about like doctors uh, it's not because I'm a doctor but because I've watched doctor tv shows and it's just like I've diagnosed you with something and they google it and they're like well actually I think it's this it's like oh well fuck my medical degree then I guess no, Google's no, solved no, the problem yeah it's it's like telling Dr. Dre that Shazam's better yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no I've <laughs> yeah, actually totally. figured this out no I really appreciate coming to your concert and having a curated choice but this Spotify radio actually thinks that you should play this song next so why don't you do that <laughs> yeah 100% yes yeah, so that's annoying I think also as well just really what? taking a recommendation listening to what I'm saying not actually listening and taking it on so being like this wine is a little bit sweet i don't think it's exactly what you want and they go no 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 i'll try it i'll try it and it's like well, no i'm telling you this because i don't think you'll like it if i open a bottle i don't think it'd be hard for me to sell it by the glass i can sell it but then being like you pour it for them and then like yeah it's a bit sweet it's not for me do you have anything else it's like well i told you very clearly <sighs> man why are we talking ah <laughs> uh, that's funny I'm on a wine tour okay. and I'm tasting a wine and I go, ah, man, I'm getting notes. What's something that is vaguely oh, intelligent right. that I can say to make hacks. people think? Hacks. Yeah, I give me some SOM hacks. Like, Very uh, fruit forward. Fruit forward? Yeah. So when you're That's saying fruit forward, thing. is that something that tastes juicy? Like it tastes sort of like fruit juice? It, yeah, kind of. It means that it's like the fruit components are really intense. They're coming forward. It, it might appear to be sweet, but it's actually dry. And what it is, it's like the fruit is like the first thing that you get and is maybe the driving character of the wine. That's actually a really, well, we've just stumbled upon this. What are some of the absolute like classic SOM terms? That, like oak, mm. woody, yeah. um, notes of- Reductive, ex- I think like listing off flaws, like yeah. it's a good thing. <laughs> Ele- yeah, elevated acidity. Yeah, lifted, <laughs> which is generally- This does sound like things that you and Brendan say quite often. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, also, one of my favorite is like, um, don't say this tastes good. Say it looks good. Yeah, that's that's the ultimate Ease. one. <laughs> oh my god! So you're inferring that you you know what it like, what it like, what its benchmark. Is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, inside. like by comparison, this is looking fantastic. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I think there's not many like. It's funny. I think certain like phrases come in and out, but I think the most the most thing is just like generally like too many descriptors. Yep. Mm. You know when you just like you probably have that mate might be you now mm. at the pub having a glass of rosé and it, just like it's, waffling it's me yeah <laughs> it definitely you. is all of my mates yeah. hate me so much since i started doing this show it's the worst <laughs> oh my this, god this show has ruined my social life <laughs> it's ruined my wallet and it's ruined my social life <laughs> welcome to the wine industry <laughs> ah, yeah. steer into the skid join Not us too much yeah less yeah. is more i guess yeah definitely i think so and i think also as well wine's about context and about people I feel like if you're super invested in your glass, you're not thinking about like the company you're with, like mm. read the room. Like, do your friends really want to hear this? Are you just like, you know? Yeah. Uh, my friends all love the sound of my voice, trust me. Oh, I mean, I do, so I assume they do. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. All right, I'm going to ask some questions. With, I guess since it's like, I, I've been around sommeliers, I've not been a sommelier, I've got a cutler ideas. Yeah. Um, 
and things that I just want to know. Just lift it, lift behind the candelabra of this of the sommelier lifestyle. Awesome. <laughs> um, how often do you run food? My last restaurant, all the time. All the time. Okay. Or like when I can. So if like, for example, um, when I was at Rana, if every single table is doing wine pairing, you know, and I, I think it was like eleven tables. Oh, okay. It means that you're constantly setting a glass, pouring a wine, taking something away. Yeah. You know, so you don't... If I'm running around without another som, mm-hmm. probably not at all. Yeah. But if something... If I need to pour something because it's holding up something else, mm-hmm. I'll take food and wine. Uh, okay, cool. You yeah. Know? Like if I can do that, but there's other nights where you feel like you're running around like a headless chicken and you're literally... The way I explain it, it's like you're juggling. You need to touch every single ball, every single table once to keep it afloat. The, the floor you, is lava. Yeah. The second you let one drop, it you can ru- like, you'll ruin your night. Kind of okay, cool. Yeah. And and this is probably the main one, I guess, is this like allocations. The the <laughs> the big A word <laughs> that every som- sommelier that not I've ever Al-Cote? talked to. <laughs> not Alicote, not Alberinho, and not <laughs> Alianico allocations. Every som that I've ever met loves to talk about their allocations and what they yeah. just got, which is it's hashtag really, som life. It's really wanky. Um, I'm not a big fan about, you know. Uh, I, I, of- look, I get it. And I get when you get excited yeah. about getting wine yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But there's certain producers, like, yeah. you know, whether it's Raveno or it's DRC, or- DRC and yeah. stuff like that, where it's like, there's only X amount of bottles in the state. How do you get that? How do you get that on your list? Yeah, so it's it's rewards based, but I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's really political as well. It's uh, like who you, if you're if, like who your mates are, to be honest. Um, and also, is your restaurant cool? Like, do, is your restaurant a place where they want that wine to be seen? Okay. And also your loyalty, loyalty to that distributor. So okay. you're, you're talking about your restaurant's allocation, not your personal take-home allocation. But some people do get a personal Some people allocation. do that. Cheeky. Some people yeah. do that. Some of it's like, oh, I'm going to get like six and I'll get five for the restaurant, one for me. Yeah. One for fucking me. I mean, you've got to know what you're selling. Yeah, exactly. But also as well, you should know with these like really iconic, Good point. classic yeah. you know, kind of wines. I've got no idea what Grange tastes like yeah. each year. I need a bottle a yeah. year to make sure I'm but up on date on that. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, the more support you show for a distributor, so if you buy a, wines across their portfolio from okay. varying price points and increasingly spend more and more each year, you're mm-hmm. likely to have an increasing allocation okay. in theory. But it also, yeah, there's the politics behind it. But it's also really lame to talk about allocations. I mean, I, I get it. I get the excitement mm-hmm. behind it. I, I completely understand. Mm-hmm. But that, yeah, the only problem with that, I guess it makes a lot of wine lists really similar. 100%. Yeah. Particularly on allocation time. Um, my partner is also um, a, a som. And he loves to go into restaurants around allocation time and just pick <laughs> off the gems. And you can see the som in the corner just being like, oh. You bastard. Oh, oh. You, yeah, it's like, I worked so hard for that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we lead different lives. Anyway. <laughs> um, very. Do you have a particular favourite wine you've ever poured? Oh, good one. Mm. Really good one. Doesn't have to be a Unico wine. <laughs> <laughs> because it would that's, be otherwise if anyone's watching at home. That's as loaded as just you spinning the barrel right in front of. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't um, have to be, but can be. I don't. I don't think there's a favorite wine I've ever poured, but what I love and what I miss about it is having access to a Coravin at all times because it just means mm. like you can have so many wines open. Okay, yeah. You know, and you don't have to worry about, oh, is this going to go bad? Do I have to push this really aggressively this week because it'll be fucked, you know, in two days' time or whatever. So it's like having, yeah, having access to a Coravin to be able to open whatever you, you think the customer would like, then to yep. be able to sell it Best wine slowly is. over time. Cool. That's sick. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the better answer. All right. Until next week or next month or whenever we do this one again. Whenever. Ciao. See ya.